It's his interest rate day again today, but uh, pensioners may be feeling pinched because of something else. Morning, Steph. Good morning. I still can't believe that about the snowmen. That's absolutely <laughs> shocking, that. Because <laughs> fair enough to just knock them down, but to chop their head off. Yeah, it's <laughs> brutal, isn't it? It's just that. brutal. Yes, it really is. Anyway, interest rates today. We're not expecting a change on interest rates, but we are expecting some other news. Uh, good morning, everybody. There's a chance today that the Bank of England will announce that it's to create billions of pounds through its quantitative easing programme, which is designed to really help the economy uh, but this could be bad news for pensioners who are about to buy what's called an annuity and that's essentially a policy that you buy with your pension pot to give you a guaranteed income when you retire now the interest rate you get is linked to the rate that the government pays on its debts which of course is being pushed down by all of this extra cash sloshing around the system let me just explain this with an example that might uh, highlight it a bit better now imagine you have a pension pot of £100,000 and you're about to retire. Well, back in 2008, that pot would get you almost £8,000 a year to live on if you'd bought an annuity at market rates. But now, almost three years after quantitative easing first began, that £100,000 pension pot would translate into an annual annuity of just under £6,000. You can see there that that's a drop of almost a quarter, 25%. Well, with me now is Ros Altman, who's Director General of Saga and a former advisor on pensions to the government. Just to explain it, I mean, it's quite a complicated thing to get your head around. The Bank of England wants to create more money, but that might bring down your pension. Just to explain a bit more about how that works. Well, the, the big problem is that when the Bank of England is creating this new money, it's buying government bonds with it. And the price of buying a pension is determined by the interest rate on government bonds. And the lower that rate is, the lower your pension will be. Uh, insurance companies promise to pay you a certain amount of money for the rest of your retirement but if bond yields are lower because the Bank of England has bought so many bond, uh, bonds in the market then you will get less pension and that's been a huge problem half a million uh, annuities which is basically a pension are bought every year and the more the Bank of England buys gilt the worse the pension income will be for the rest of these people's lives. That's really the problem. And, and, and when we're talking about the people who are affected by this, if you've already got your pension, it's not those people who are affected, it's people who are now buying new annuities, isn't it? People coming up to retire. Anyone who's already retired recently will have had a pretty poor rate for their annuity. Anyone coming up for retirement now, and 2012 is a bumper year for people reaching age 65, because of the baby boom after the Second World War. All of those people have had their pension income reduced for the rest of their lives by this policy that's supposed to stimulate the economy. And I just don't quite see how making pensioners poorer is going to stimulate the economy. Is there anything that can be done about it in terms of, you know, do you have to have an annuity? Well, that's the other thing. You see, anyone coming up for retirement is facing this Hobson's choice. If you don't buy an annuity, you may face a penalty from your pension company. If you go into something called income drawdown, where you just take money out of your pension fund, again, the government determines how much you can take out. And the lower the gilt yields are, the lower the government bond yields are, the lower the pension you can take. So really, you're very much stuck. And what you may have to think about doing is just keeping on working, which is not great news. Mm. And I think, you know, the Bank of England has not understood or factored in the effect of its buying of guilt on people coming up for retirement. And, you know, we're talking millions of people here, so it's not a small issue. Although they would, the Bank of England would say that they have helped in other ways, helped economic, to, you know, gross domestic product, our economic growth. So there's that argument back from them. There isn't strong evidence, really, that quantitative easing will stimulate the economy. And I would argue that if you're going to create new money, you're better off dropping pound notes from a helicopter or underwriting small business lending than buying gilts. OK, thank you very much for your Thanks, time, Ross. That's it for me for now.